my people, the world never believed we could build our own future. But today, with our own hands, we have proven that Burkina Faso can rise, create and lead. Burkina Faso surprised the whole world when it launched its first electric cars that were assembled inside the country. For decades people believed this nation could only import old second-hand vehicles. Nobody expected that brand new solar-powered electric cars would roll out of a factory built on Burkina Bay soil. But in 2025, that is exactly what happened. The new car brand, called Itawa, was created to give the country a fresh start in modern technology. These cars were not imported, and they were not prototypes made for show. They were real, working electric vehicles built for everyday use. The factory was set up in a place called Uwaga 2000, and the cars were assembled by young Burkina Bay technicians. Seeing a modern EV being tested on local roads shocked many people. It proved that Burkina Faso can do things that even richer countries struggle to do. This moment became a symbol of hope. It showed that development is possible, even in countries facing economic pressure. It showed that Africa can build, innovate and lead, and it inspired millions of young people to believe that their country has the power to rise. Before the Alpha cars appeared, something very important happened behind the scenes. Dozens of young Burkina Bay technicians traveled to China to learn how to build electric cars. They didn't go for tourism or classroom lectures, they went for real practical training inside big Chinese EV factories. In China, the training style was simple, you learn by doing. The technicians were given tools, machines and components, and they were asked to assemble real parts themselves. They practiced connecting wires, testing batteries, installing motors, and fixing software. Every mistake they made became a lesson. They didn't just watch experts, they became experts. This kind of training changed everything. When the technicians returned to Burkina Faso, they were fully ready to run the new factory. They knew how every part worked and how to put everything together correctly. This is why the Alpha plant did not collapse or fail. It had a team of trained people who knew exactly what they were doing. For the first time, young Burkina Bay realized they could master global technologies. They didn't need to leave their country to find good jobs. They could build the future right at home. Unlike many partnerships Africa has seen in the past, China did something different. It offered full technology transfer, which means teaching Burkina Faso how to build electric cars from the ground up. China did not hide the technology or keep the knowledge for itself. Instead, it opened its factories, shared its techniques, and allowed Burkina Bay technicians to learn everything. Chinese engineers didn't just send documents or videos. They were physically present in Burkina Faso when the Itawa plant was being installed. They set up machines, taught workers how to operate them, and explained how every system worked. But they did not finish the work alone. They made Burkina Bay technicians tighten the final bolts, press the final buttons, and run the final tests. This was important because it changed the mindset from China is helping us to we can do this ourselves. Western media tried to say it was dependency. But people on the ground saw the truth. China treated Africans as partners, not as followers. It shared its knowledge openly and helped build an independent local workforce. This partnership allowed Burkina Faso to break the old cycle of importing used cars and being dependent on foreign companies. The electric cars built in Burkina Faso were not fancy luxurious vehicles meant only for rich people. They were simple, smart and made for African conditions. The first two models were called Itawa Sahel and Itawa Native. These cars had strong bodies for rough roads, long battery life for long trips and low maintenance that ordinary people could afford. The best feature was the solar charging system. In Africa, sunlight is free and everywhere. Fuel is expensive and sometimes hard to find. So the solar panels on the cars made perfect sense. You could charge the car at home, at a station, or simply with sunlight. The Itawa Sahel quickly became the favorite model. It could travel up to 330 kilometers on one charge, which is more than enough for daily use, and charging the car cost far less than buying fuel. Repairs were also very cheap, because the car had no oil changes, no spark plugs, and no complicated engine parts. These cars showed that modern technology does not need to be expensive. It can be practical, affordable, and built for everyday African life. For many citizens it was the first time they felt that a modern product was truly made for them. One of the biggest reasons the Itawa Sahel became famous so quickly is because it saves people a lot of money. In Burkina Faso, fuel is very expensive. Every time drivers needed to fill their tanks, they spent a large part of their income, but the Itawa Sahel changed everything. 
charging the car cost only a few thousand CFA, which is far cheaper than buying fuel. This made the car immediately attractive for people who travel daily. Maintenance was also very low. Traditional cars have engines with hundreds of parts that can break. They need oil changes, filters, spark plugs, and regular repairs. But the Ottawa Sahel, being electric, has very few moving parts. This means fewer breakdowns, less money spent, and less time in the workshop. Even drivers who were skeptical at first began to trust the car once they saw how strong and reliable it was on rough roads. Another thing people loved was the long driving range, 330 kilometers on one charge. This was more than enough for city driving, village trips and work routes. In short, the Ottawa Sahel made transportation cheaper, easier and stress-free for thousands of people. When the Ottawa cars started driving on the streets of Ouagadougou, taxi drivers became the first real testers. Taxis run all day long, in hot weather, heavy traffic and rough roads. If a car survives taxi duty, it can survive anything. At first many taxi drivers were doubtful. They believed electric cars were weak or unreliable. But when they used the Ottawa Sahel, their opinion changed completely. Drivers noticed the car did not overheat, even under the hot Sahel sun. It moved smoothly in traffic and climbed slopes without problems. They also loved how quiet the car was. It made their work less stressful. But the best part for them was money. Instead of spending thousands every day on fuel, they only needed a cheap electric charge. Some drivers said they saved more money in one month with Ottawa than they ever had in their careers. Because of these benefits, 30 electric taxis were soon running in the city, and more were planned. Ride-hailing services also started buying Ottawa cars in bulk. Taxi drivers quickly became the strongest promoters of the new EVs, telling everyone how much money they were saving. In the beginning, many people did not believe Burkina Faso could produce modern electric cars. They thought the cars were imported or only for show. But when they saw new Itawa taxis operating on the roads every day, their feelings changed. People started noticing the clean design, the quiet engine sound, and the Itawa logo on the front. These taxis looked different from the old, worn-out imported cars the city was used to. Passengers inside the taxis were shocked when drivers told them the cars were assembled locally. Some refused to believe it at first. But the more they saw, the more their doubt turned into excitement. For the first time, people felt proud that something modern and technologically advanced was made in their own country. The cars became a symbol of progress, especially for the youth. Parents told their children, you see, we can build these things too. Social media filled with videos of the taxis quietly gliding across the streets. Soon these EVs were not just cars, they were a sign of hope. They showed that Burkina Faso was changing and modernizing in ways no one expected. Many people thought the electric car project was a single achievement. But in reality, it was part of a much bigger plan, led by President Ibrahim Traoré. The government wanted to reduce dependence on foreign countries and build strong local industries. That's why they started working on many projects at the same time. A gold refinery was built so that Burkina Faso could refine its own gold instead of exporting it raw. New factories for rice, tomatoes and fertilizers were opened to strengthen agriculture. Solar farms were expanded to produce more local energy and training centers were created to help young people learn skills in engineering, technology and manufacturing. The electric car project fits perfectly into this national strategy. Cars that use solar energy reduce fuel imports. Cars built locally keep money inside the country, and factories provide jobs for young people who had limited opportunities before. All these steps together create a stronger and more independent economy. Burkina Faso is sending a clear message. Development does not require waiting for foreign help. It can be built step by step with local hands, local resources, and local ideas. One of the smartest decisions Burkina Faso made was to invest heavily in solar energy. For many years, the country depended on expensive fuel imports. Every time fuel prices went up, transportation, businesses, and daily life became harder. But solar energy changed this situation. The sun is free, and Burkina Faso has plenty of it. This is why the government expanded solar farms across the country. Solar power is important for electric vehicles too. EVs need affordable and stable electricity to work well. If electricity is expensive or unreliable, people will not accept electric cars. But with solar farms, Burkina Faso can produce clean and cheap energy. This means charging an EV becomes easy and affordable for everyone. 
Solar energy also supports factories, farms, companies, and even homes. It reduces power cuts and helps the country control its own energy supply. When local energy powers local cars assembled in local factories, it creates a strong cycle of independence. The country no longer needs to rely heavily on imported fuel or foreign companies. This is why solar power is not just an energy project, it is the foundation of Burkina Faso's economic future. The electric vehicle project has created a powerful impact on young people in Burkina Faso. Before this project, many youths felt they had no future. Good jobs were rare, and many dreamt of leaving the country to find better opportunities elsewhere. But the EV industry changed that mindset. When young technicians were trained in China and returned with new skills, they became role models. They showed other youths that they too could learn modern technology and build advanced machines. Suddenly, technical careers became exciting. Young people wanted to become engineers, mechanics, software technicians, and battery specialists. The new EV plant created well-paying jobs that did not exist before. These jobs require skill, creativity, and responsibility, things young people are eager to use. Training centers in Burkina Faso are now preparing more youths to join the industry. Instead of looking for chances abroad, many are now proud to work in their own country. The EV project gave the youth a message of hope. You are capable. You can build the future. Your country needs you. This emotional shift is one of the most important outcomes of the entire project. The Itawa electric cars are not meant to stay only inside Burkina Faso. The government and the company have a much bigger plan. They want to make Itawa a major brand across West Africa. Many neighboring countries like Mali, Niger, Ghana, Benin and Togo have the same problems as Burkina Faso. Fuel is expensive, imported cars break easily, and transportation costs keep rising. Itawa EVs are a perfect solution because they are affordable, strong, and built for African roads. If the company keeps the price low and the quality high, millions of people across West Africa could start using them. The demand is already growing as people in other countries see videos and photos of Itawa taxis running successfully. Exporting cars also brings money into the country strengthens the economy, and creates more jobs. Burkina Faso is preparing to expand production lines, build more factories, and train new teams. They want to make enough cars not only for Burkina Faso, but for the entire region. If Itawa succeeds in West Africa, it could eventually become one of Africa's biggest car brands, built by Africans, for Africans. The future of the Itawa project is even more exciting than what has already been achieved. The team behind Itawa has big dreams. They want to create new car models, bigger cars, electric pickups, buses, and even advanced hybrid vehicles. Each new model will give more choices to African families, businesses, and transport companies. One of the biggest goals is battery production. Right now, batteries are imported, but if Burkina Faso learns to build or recycle its own batteries, it will become much more powerful industrially. Batteries are the heart of EV technology. A country that produces them can control prices, improve quality, and export them to other markets. There are also discussions about creating a fully Burkinabe-designed EV. This means a car imagined, designed, tested, and built entirely by local engineers. That would be a historic achievement. In the long run, Itawa wants to sell cars outside Africa too. Many countries in Asia and Latin America need cheap, reliable electric cars. Even some parts of Europe are looking for low-cost EV options. If Itawa maintains quality and keeps prices low, it could enter the global market. Burkina Faso is proving that even a small nation can dream big and win.